What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. How you guys doing, bro? You guys know what we do here, man. But if you don't, if you're brand new to the channel, we break down scary and creepy videos, man. On and there, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, anything weird, usual, and explained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, who's been set up to the channel. We're almost so close to a thousand, so greatly appreciate that. Found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out, Seekers. We seek the truth out here, bro. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. When 14 year old George Stinney was executed via electric chair, he was too short for the chair, so he used his Bible as a booster seat. He was later found out to be innocent. In the 1600s, Athanasius Kircher invented a musical instrument made out of cats. He would place them in a row according to the tone of their voice, mm. stretching their tails under a keyboard made out of sharp nails. Texas had absolutely no regulations on natural gas until 1937, when a school blew up killing 295 students and teachers. No one was held responsible and the event was so bad that even Hitler sent a letter of condolence. There's a parasite called mm. guinea worm that enters your leg through infected drinking water. And you won't even know that you have it until a year later when it comes out through blisters on your skin. And at this point, it's over two feet long. Mm. It's commonly believed that the chlorine in pools make our eyes red. However, it's actually chlorine mixing with urine that causes this to happen. Imagine celebrating- What? Seekers. Did you guys hear that, man? Because you guys know I guess, you know, back in the day, I went to a cool pool a couple of times, you know. And I was speaking to kid and stuff, and my house sometimes it would be red. Sometimes, but not all the times, man. So you're telling me I have to get piss in the water, bro? That's when my eyes is burning? The more you know secrets, man. Like I said, when I watch these videos with you guys, bro, all this expands my knowledge, bitch, bro. Hopefully it does the same thing with you guys as well, man. That's an insane fact. Hitting your 18th birthday when your entire family tells you that they've been hiding a secret from you. But now they're finally ready to reveal what the secret is. Your mm -hmm. parents explain that your family members are all successful because of a gift that you're also about to receive. So you ask what the gift is. That's when you hear strange noises coming from outside the window. Your mother says you hear it, don't you? Go and take a look. But when you look out the window, you see a bald man with a distorted face and a large gaping mouth. Oh, no. And he's staring right at you. Your family explains that this entity appears on your 18th birthday and moves closer to you the closer you get to your death. And once you die, you'll finally be together. Your mom even reassures you that for most of your life, it'll be so far away that you'll barely remember it's there. Confused, you tell your mom, mm -hmm. but it isn't far away anymore. It's standing right behind you. This short film is called Special Day. And this concept oh. definitely deserves its own movie. So check out this short film and follow for more. This man dropped his pregnant wife to terminate her pregnancy after he began an affair. Catherine Herring gave birth 10 weeks early after her husband Mason spiked her drink with abortion-inducing drugs. Mason, an attorney in Houston, began an affair earlier that year and wanted to divorce Catherine. So when he found out she was pregnant with her third child, he took matters into his own hands. But Mason didn't just do this once. He attempted to drug Catherine multiple times and she became suspicious when one day he offered her a class of water that looked really cloudy. Catherine then found open packages labeled as Cyrex, which contains misoprostol, a drug that is used to cause abortions. And not long after, she installed cameras and caught Mason pouring a powdery substance in her cranberry juice. Catherine then began collecting samples to build a case against Mason. Their daughter was born premature, and due to the harmful drugs, it's been said that she will have learning difficulties. Mason was sentenced to 180 days in jail and 10 years of probation as part of his plea deal seekers man what do you guys think of that case bro i mean he couldn't deal with the consequences of his actions bro he tried to just end it all man and it affected his child bro he's on 10 years of freaking probation man i don't know if i agree with bro he tried to freaking mess with the life bro he freaking affected his own child's life man just because he because he wanted to, I guess, freaking go off. And then another thing, man, that ended. But he got caught up with this relationship that, that he was in. Another child come, but he didn't want it. So he just tried to do the unthinkable. Seekers, man. The things people do nowadays, bro. It's truly evil, Seekers, man. This world, bro. It's a dark, dark place.
edit. You gotta call it like I see it, bro. That's an edit. Most bro. scary urban legends, part four. This is Kuchisaki Ona. This is the woman who died and came back as an evil spirit. Oh. This is her story. She used to be the most beautiful woman in her town, and every single man wanted her. But she picked a very skilled samurai. Later, he had to go to war, and she became very lonely. She then fell in love with another man, because she was tired of waiting for her husband to come home. Her mm -hmm. husband then came home. He was so enraged, he killed the man she was with, and slit her mouth with his sword, so she could never be beautiful again. She then bled out and died. Now her spirit has come back for revenge. She wears a mask to cover her scars. She wanders across the street looking for victims. She then says to them, am I beautiful? If you say yes, she then takes off her mask and says, am I beautiful again? If the person gets scared or screams or says no, she will get a very big pair of scissors and cut your face just like hers. But if you say yes both times with no fear, she will leave you alone. Praise your story. This man seekers. is one of the worst pedophiles in the history of Texas. I'm going to warn you right now, this story is extremely graphic and disturbing, so viewer discretion is advised. So the Galleria Mall in Houston is one of the largest malls in America. Mm. It's actually only about 15 minutes from where my apartment is, and it's a very, very nice mall. But at a kiosk inside of the mall worked one of the worst monsters I've ever read about. This man, Arthur Fernandez. So on December 6, 2023, an Australian anti-child exploitation agency flagged a video that appeared from America. This video appeared to depict two toddlers being essayed by a group of at least seven men in a bathroom. These videos initially appeared on an invitation-only dark web forum for pedophiles. And one of the young boys who was victimized in the video was being abused on a changing table. Mm. Authorities were eventually able to track down the Galleria Mall in Houston as being the place where these sickening videos were recorded. Keep in mind there were four different videos depicting the abuse of these toddlers by this group of seven men. And eventually, because of two silver bracelets that Arthur was wearing on his wrists, he was identified. As it turned out, Arthur wears these bracelets all the time, and the relatives of the two young victims identified Arthur through these bracelets. Mm. Apparently, Arthur worked with the mother of one of these children and worked next door to the mother of the other child. And sometimes when these two mothers were called into work on their days off, they would trust Arthur to keep care of their kids. The evidence in this case is overwhelming and disgusting. I'm going to read this to you. This is from the Daily Mail. One of the men even told the victim, the young child in the video, to shut the F up as he struggled. And in another video, an abuser called the boy, you effing slut, and told him to cry like a little itch. So, so far, none of the other men in this case have been charged with anything or even identified. And I think that they need to find these guys as soon as physically possible and bring them to justice. Because this is horrific and disgusting that these men are still out there walking amongst us. And now I'm going to look at the Galleria here in Houston in a completely different light. And I hope that Arthur suffers for the rest of his hopefully short life. This woman plays... Man, I'm trying to tell you secrets, bro. You gotta be freaking careful who that's watching your freaking kids, man, because you never know what, what freaking evil thoughts, man, going through this freaking head, bro. Like I said, now, it does it make me look at the freaking that, that gallery and mall, bro, freaking differently, bro. What's going on? They said four separate videos, man. Other people could be freaking connected to that as well, secrets, bro. Always gotta be aware, man. Always. She was being arrested for being too pretty. Mm -hmm. She's now being convicted of murder. Kendra Bastani is a 29-year-old woman from Las Vegas. In 2022, she was arrested at Harry Reid International Airport after leaving a restaurant without paying. When she was arrested, she told people that she was being harassed by police because they'd never seen anybody as pretty as her. She was apparently intoxicated at the time. She told them she was going to spit on them and she accused them of trying to R her. A few months later, she was arrested for a far more hideous crime. <clears throat> Dispatchers received a 911 call from her on the 26th of October 2022. It was around 2.30 a.m. She stated, I think I killed my mummy, and she was referring to her 61 year old mother. Her mum was a bath for salmon. She admitted on the call to breaking a glass table over her mum's head. She stated on the phone to the dispatcher, I broke the table on her head and I cut her neck off. Officers found the killer in California covered in blood. Her mum's body was at her home in Vegas. 
Kim stated that the pair had had an argument over cigarettes and it had escalated. She was charged with second degree murder with a deadly weapon, but she pleaded guilty but mentally ill. She was eventually sentenced to 15 years in prison. Mr. Jamie. See, cause did you guys hear that, man? Oh, some cigarettes, bro. Like I said, man, when we view these cases together, it just freaking shocks me, man. It's just like the smallest things, bro. It can turn into something freaking a daily conflict, bro. Like, oh, some cigarettes and did it to your own mother, bro. It's never that serious, Seekers, bro. Never, man. What are you going through people's head when you be doing things like that? Soon in here, and he beheaded and dismembered his summon and wore his body parts as a necklace. He's in jail for the murder of Yvette Pena. He was interviewed several times. He knows he's sadistic. He does not care, and he will repeat it over and over again as he stated. Apparently, when the guards were running around to do their checks, they saw that Luis Romero, his cellmate, was dead. Now, not only was Luis Romero dead, this psycho right here carved a smiling face right into his cheek. He also dismembered him and beheaded him with a makeshift knife that he mm. made. Luis Romero's family believes the guards were not doing their job properly, and why did this guy even have a cellmate if he's known Solitary. to be hostile to all his other cellmates before him? A lot of questions here that are unanswered, but he cut off one of Romero's hands, a lung, even one of his eyeballs. It's absolutely horrifying and gruesome mm. things. Also, he reportedly wrote his name in blood on one of his cells before. Like I said in another video referencing him, this guy needs to be locked up in solitary confinement. Let me know what you guys think about Jamie Osuna and his story in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Solitary, bro. Person that dangerous, you no remorse, man. Edit. Come on, see, because we got to call that free see bro. It's an edit, man. Creepy Not urban legends from each country, part three. The Three Witches, New Zealand. Auckland Domain is a park found in New Zealand, but it used to be a swampland and was supposedly used in the 1800s to hang a trio of witches. Mm. Local stories state that to this day, lone travelers who venture into the park after dark may find themselves accosted by a lone cackling or growling hag, which at the least will give you the incentive that you need to finish off your evening jog with a nice burst of speed. Ooh, okay. Horror movies based on true events. The bodies of seekers, man. Like I said before, bro, these forms of media and stuff we be seeing, these shows, movies and stuff, like these horror movies and stuff, man, they really be based off true stories, bro. I didn't even freaking kind of believe in that stuff until I started watching these videos with you guys, man. They that the strangers is based off a freaking true story, bro. It makes you wonder what type of other freaking movies and shows are out there, man, that are based on true stories, but we just don't know. We just think it's a form of entertainment, but it's really something else, man. It's sinister, bro. A message that we just haven't been paying attention to. ...of a rookie deputy and a woman he had arrested had been recovered from the Tennessee River after they went missing after the arrest. Mm -hmm. On the night of the incident, Meigs County Deputy R.J. Leonard responded to a call on a highway bridge in Tennessee. He was then dispatched to the scene where he encountered an incident and subsequently arrested a woman. This marked Leonard's first arrest since joining the sheriff's office two months prior. Shortly after the arrest, Leonard communicated via dispatch, although the message was initially difficult to comprehend. Authorities believe he was indicating something about water. Mm. Simultaneously, he sent a brief text to his wife, mentioning the word arrest. Leonard and the woman he arrested went missing, prompting a search effort that lasted nearly 24 hours. Eventually, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office confirmed the discovery of Leonard's body. Additionally, authorities retrieved Leonard's patrol car and the body of the arrested woman from the Tennessee River. The identity of the woman has not been publicly disclosed. The circumstances surrounding their deaths, including how they ended up in the river, remain under investigation. What do you guys think about that, man? How the hell did they end up in the river? Was this person's rest as well? Yeah, dude. Something strange is happening in Iceland, but you might be able to help.
After a billionaire named Andy Ronson invited nine individuals to one of his exclusive retreats, one of the guests was mysteriously found dead. Now here's what's interesting. One of the guests, Darby Hart, witnessed the death firsthand and believes that it was intentional. However, the other guests don't believe her, which leads the girl down a rabbit hole of evidence, clues, and difficult conversations in mm. order for her to prove that this death was by no means an accident, but a murder. And Darby must use her skills to make her case before this killer takes another life. And if you want to join her for the journey, this series is now streaming on Hulu. Thanks to FX for sponsoring this video. What would you do if you were offered $9 million but you had to unlike your best friend? In 2019, 22-year-old Denali Bremer from Anchorage, Alaska had met a guy online named Tyler. Tyler was supposedly a millionaire from Kansas and he fell madly in love with Denali after meeting her online. Tyler had promised Denali $9 million if she SA in her life someone. If she were to videotape the crimes and send him photos of what happened, then the money would be hers. The two quickly formed a close bond, and within months, they began their plans. The thing was, Tyler was lying about who he was. His name was actually Darren Schoenmiller, and he wasn't a millionaire. He was just a regular guy living in Indiana. Denali had no idea that he wasn't who he said he was. Denali and Darren had exchanged numerous messages how this plan was going to work. Denali took no time to choose her best friend, 19-year-old Cynthia Hoffman. Denali had chose four of her closest friends, and if they were to help out with the plan, they would get some of the money, which included two juveniles who have not been named, and we have Caden and Kayla. On June 2nd of 2019, Cynthia had left her home to hang out with some friends. She failed to return home, so her father tried to report her as missing, but when he went to the police, they said that he had to wait at least 24 hours. Denali had called Cynthia's dad throughout the night, telling him how she hoped that Cynthia was okay, and since they were best friends, Cynthia's dad did not find this strange at all. A few days later, Cynthia's body was found in a river. She had suffered a gunshot wound in the back of her mm. head. The police had investigated her death and put together details pretty quickly. Denali was then brought into the station for questioning. Denali had mentioned to investigators that all of the friends were playing a game where they all duct tape each other. Cynthia was first in the game and she immediately knew it wasn't a game anymore when Denali had retrieved the gun and pointed it at her. That is when Caleb had grabbed the gun from Denali and shot Cynthia in the back of the head. Denali was excited what she had did to her best friend so she immediately called Darren and that's when she knew she was tricked. Denali had led detectives to the others who had participated and they were arrested within a few days. In February of 2023, Denali had accepted a plea deal and will spend at least 30 years in prison. In August of 2023, Darren had pled guilty and he will be sentenced at a later date. As for Caleb, in November of 2023, he pled guilty to second degree murder and he is expected to be in jail for 75 years. Three urban? Damn, bro, it's freaking secrets, man. It's scary the things that people do for freaking money, bro. Like her freaking best friend, bro, just turned on a man. As soon as they heard that money, that she was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm just like, damn, bro. Money really can truly change a person, bro. Root of all evil, man. And she got other people in it as well, bro. Seekers, boy. Choose who you choose your friends carefully, man. And wisely, bro. That's all I got to say. And legends that turned out to be true. Number one. In the 1980s, parents in Long Island terrified their children with the legend of Cropsey. He was a murderous man who lived beneath an abandoned school and would capture children. But it was later found that the old janitor of the school was still living on school grounds, and it's believed he was responsible for the disappearance of several kids, which made the legend of Cropsey true. Number two. Charlie No-Face was the terrifying legend of a featureless man who would roam the streets of Pittsburgh at night. But it was discovered that this man did exist. His name was Raymond Robinson. He was a very nice guy, and he only left his house at night as he feared his deformity would scare people. Number three. Mm -hmm. Legend has it that an escaped asylum patient roams near the Fairfax County Bridge where countless amounts of dead rabbits have been found. There wasn't any legitimacy to this legend until a couple drove through this bridge in the 1970s only to find a man dressed as a bunny who threw an axe through their windshield before they got away. See, cause what do you guys think about those freaking urban legends, man? It's turning true, bro. Like I said, bro, there may be some like truth behind 
all the freaking urban legend stories, man. Just not those three freaking cases, but we just haven't figured it out yet, man. It's freaking scary, actually, if you think about it, Seekers, bro. That those freaking urban legends, they turned out to be true. Hmm. There's some other ones, man. That's bound to freaking happen, bro. It's going to turn out to be true, bro. This man went on Amazon to review the products he was using during his murders. Todd Kolhep was a South Carolina realtor who owned 95 acres of property. It was on this property that he hired the help of Kayla Brown and her boyfriend, Charles Carver. Mm. Immediately upon arriving, he shot Charles and forced Kayla into this shipping container where she would be held for two months. Mm. During Kayla's captivity, Todd revealed to her that he was actually a serial killer and was not only responsible for the murders of another couple, but was also responsible for the mass shooting that took the lives mm. of four people at Superbike Motorsports in Chesney, South Carolina. Until Todd's confession, this shooting was actually unsolved for 13 years, and police even considered the pregnant wives of one of the victims to be the main suspect. His motive for the shooting was because they refused to return a motorcycle he had purchased there. After mm. Kayla Brown was rescued from the shipping container where she was chained up like a dog, she revealed that Todd was hoping she would form Stockholm Syndrome and that he was building a home for them with a soundproof area where Kayla would be held indefinitely. But when mm. police arrived, they found a pre-dug hole next to where Charles was buried and believed that Todd was just days, if not hours, away from killing Kayla too. After his imprisonment, the disturbing Amazon reviews were revealed. One of them for padlocks stating solid locks have five of them on a shipping container and another for a shovel mm. that says to keep it in your car when you need to hide bodies. Listen to episode five of the Oddities on Elm Street podcast for the full breakdown of this case. There's a new board. Sure, man. Now just make, make it sure, bro. You need to pay attention to all freaking reviews now, man, because there could be some hidden messages in it, bro. That freaking people are doing evil things, man, with the Freaking those what they purchasing, bro. I gotta scroll through the past and a couple of reviews, bro. Check it out, man. Could be some deeper meaning behind those messages, bro. See, cause what do you guys think? Or will be coming out soon about a deck of tarot cards that has some kind of evil trapped inside of it. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be really scary, so let's watch the trailer together. I also haven't seen it yet, so this is a blind react. Tarot cards in this circle. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Your meeting will start. That's terrifying. Yeah, this old deck's kind of strange. Where did you find it? It's an unspoken wound not to use somebody else's cards. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Who's going first? Hello? Your marriage will deal with the death of Thing about that freaking terror movie. Edit, come on, bro. It'll be Are you today. tired of the police always figuring out where you buried your dead bodies? If so, congratulations, you once again made it to Criminal TikTok, and today I'm going to be giving you mm. some tips and tricks on how to better bury your dead body so it's never found. What of course, the? all these methods work better when there's more people involved, so make sure to tag some friends who do this with you. Alright, tip and trick number one, never put the dead body in the suitcase. Whenever people see a suitcase that's abandoned, their first instinct is always to open it. 
Also, the suitcase decreases the decomposition rate, so this is exactly what you do not want. Tip and trick number two is low-key a lot higher risk, but if you buried a dead body, you want to bury it at least nine feet deep. Once you have buried the dead body, you could do some reverse psychology by sticking a tombstone on top of it. You see, if everyone expects there to be a dead body there, even if they find the dead body, they're probably not going to ask too many questions. Tip number three, if you're burying the body in a semi-populated area, simply have someone standing around you with a camera. Because then people will think you're like filming a movie or a documentary and probably will just forget the whole event. Tip number four, if you're not able to bury it nine feet deep, chances are over time wind will blow away the soil or erosion will cause the body to become exposed. You can prevent against this by planting a layer of grass on top of the soil. This way, the soil can't get blown or washed away. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow for more tips and tricks. She was so... That's actually freaking crazy, bro. He's giving away tips and tricks on how to pick and hide bodies, bro. I don't think that's good secrets, man. Like, what the hell? I don't know if you can, you know, if you can... The mental people, bro, actually gonna try to freaking listen to what he said, bro. It's freaking crazy TikTok, bro. One of the craziest I've seen so far yet, Seekers. Life and loss of $200. November 10th of 2009, around 6 a.m., five-year-old Shania Davis had been kidnapped. At least that's what her mother, Antoinette Nicole Davis, had claimed. Mm. Around 6 a.m. that morning, she woke up her sister, Brenda, and her boyfriend to tell them that Shania was missing. Antoinette was hesitant to make that call to police, but her sister Brenda kept urging her over an hour to make that call. Shania had been seen on security cameras with a man at a hotel. 30 minutes later, Shania was seen on security camera once again, and this time the man was carrying her out of the hotel. The following day, an Amber Alert was issued for Shania, and one of the hotel employees had recognized her from the security footage. Mm. Eventually, the man was identified as Mario Andret McNeil, and he was Antoinette's sister's ex-boyfriend. Police ended up interviewing Antoinette, and she admitted that Shania was not kidnapped. Antoinette had given Shania to Mario to settle her debt of $200. On the night of November 9th, Mario had been at home with his girlfriend and his child. He had been drinking and doing drugs all evening, and that's when he decided to go through his phone and text women. Eventually, this led him to text his ex-girlfriend, Brenda. Brenda didn't respond to him, but someone else who lived in the trailer park did. It was Antoinette who had been texting him, but he had no idea about this. Mm -hmm. He made his way to the trailer park, but the woman who had been texting him had fell asleep. He tried to text Brenda again, but this didn't matter because he knew how to get in. When Antoinette talked to investigators, she stated that she had owed Mario $200. Since Antoinette did not have the money, she offered Shania to him. During Mario's trial, he had stated that he didn't know where he had left Shania. Officers ended up doing a search for her, and they found her body beneath a log. Shania's autopsy revealed that she was S8 and smothered. In May of 2013, Mario was convicted and sentenced to death. Antoinette was pregnant at the time of her arrest, and once she had the baby, the baby was put into foster care. She pleaded not guilty, but the state had enough evidence to convict her of second-degree murder. Mm. Antoinette was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Rest in peace to Shania Davis. This photo shows what type of freaking parent bro sells her own freaking daughter, man. For two hundred dollars as well. Seekers, bro. These people are freaking truly demented, man. You gotta be freaking aware, bro. Like what the hell, man? As soon as you had the other kid, bro, they freaking made they gave it put in the system right away because of what happened to the first uh, her first child. They wasn't even taking that chance again, bro. That's insane. It was 14-year-old Ava Wood and her father Christopher, who would later murder his daughter with a 20-gauge shotgun before turning the weapon on himself. Ava was a ninth grade student from Baldwinsville, New York, who was a member of the honor roll and MVP of the girls' soccer team. But on January 20th of this year, Ava's mother called the police asking if they could check up on her daughter because Ava hadn't shown up for school that morning. She explains that Ava was home with her father, who was severely depressed, and that the night before they had spoken on the phone together when he said, this is how it ends for us. Ava's mother then gives the police officers a key to get into the house, but when they step inside, what they see is devastating. Ava and her father are in two separate bedrooms. Both of them have gunshot wounds, and the dads are self-inflicted. This case is absolutely heartbreaking, and we may never know why Ava's father chose to do this to that poor girl, 
on her birthday. This is the worst thing a Tarko has world. ever done to someone, and whatever you do, don't look up the video. Mm -hmm. This video was released in late 2018 to early 2019, and it depicts the horrific torture of Leosa Maiz, who is on your screen right now. The video went viral on multiple social media platforms, and when the video opens up, Leosa is squatting on the ground surrounded by several men. Mm -hmm. It's immediately clear that he has been beaten up before the recording began. Then, men start telling Leosa to open his mouth, which he does. Then, one of the men grabs his tongue and pulls it so it's exposed and stretched out of his mouth. As the man is holding the tongue, one of the other men grabs a machete and starts slicing off Leosa's tongue. And as this is happening, Leosa is screaming in pain. You see his mouth filling up with blood. They then complete the job and sever his tongue, and a huge amount of blood spills out of Leosa's mouth and covers his chest. At this point, the men make Leosa put the severed tongue back into his mouth. Blood continues to flow, and the look on his face is just haunting. Mm. You can see fear cemented on his face and the terror in his eyes. But they weren't done there. They then make him place his hand on a rock, and then the man with the machete starts hacking away at Leosa's mm. fingers. The screams at this point can only be described as haunting. After multiple machete hacks, Leosa's fingers are completely mangled, though they are still attached by shreds of skin. The man with the machete then completes the job and slices off Leosa's fingers. Mm. He then does the same with his thumb, hacking and slicing away until the thumb has been removed. And that is where the video ends, but it's not where the torture ends. Off camera, they remove Leosa's entire left hand, and much worse, they completely blind him by gouging out his eyes. Mm. And unlike the other cartel videos I cover, this wasn't a prolonged torture session followed by an execution. They actually let Leosa live essentially serving as a warning to other potential deserters. This case is just awful. Obviously, what they subjected Leosa to was extremely cruel and That's just gross. downright evil. But what really bothers me is what they subjected him to that day, he has to live with for the rest of his life. Just think about it. He can never see again, and the last thing he did see was what they did to him. Mm. He barely has the use of his hands, and communication for him at this point will be extremely difficult. He essentially lost his independence and the ability to earn money for his family. When I see things like this and read about it, I always try and put myself in that person's position. What would I do? How would I feel? And honestly, I wouldn't want to be here anymore. Mm. It's just an extremely horrific case, especially knowing how he has to live the rest of his life. There's a news report in Spanish on YouTube covering this case, and you can see how Leosa is now, what his living conditions are like, and you can also see his wife and kid. This case really got to me, and whatever you do, don't search for the video. This is some crazy seekers, bro. They actually let him freaking go. They like that. Yeah, I guess you said it. What well, about to serve as a warning, man? So other people wouldn't try to do that, bro. It's freaking crazy seekers. Truly. Seekers, man, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a real one. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Like I said, guys, I really appreciate that, man. Um, like I said, I've been seeing you guys' comments, how sometimes you guys don't want me you got, don't want, to re want me to react, I guess, to that too calm, I guess. If you could contest, I was thinking about it, man. If I make a Discord, bro, would you guys send me, I guess, the woke and uh, I guess the creepy TikToks, other creepy TikToks that you guys want me to react to? Because I'll do it, man, but... I just want to know if the seekers, man, if you guys, if you guys want me to do that. So once again, man, if you guys want me to freaking make a discord so you guys can actually send me like the um other TikTok, um, you know, clips and stuff that you guys want me to check out and see, I would do that, man. So hit that like button, man, subscribe. That's the only way you guys can let me know. Tell me in the comment section down below, guys. I wanted to do it, but I just want to see if you guys um, want me to do it as well. So. If you guys want me to do that, like I said, hit that like button, man. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost so close to a thousand, man. We're right there. You guys, I'm catching the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, Seekers.